Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA semester 4, routing and switching, connecting networks. This is chapter 9, troubleshooting the network. Chapter 9 is divided in two sections. The first section is 9.1, troubleshooting with systematic approach, and section 9.2, network troubleshooting. Section 9.1, Troubleshooting with a Systematic Approach. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to explain how network documentation is developed and used in troubleshooting network issues, describe the general troubleshooting process, and be able to compare troubleshooting methods that use a systematic layered approach. Documenting the network. Network documentation is a complete set of accurate and current network documentation. This documentation includes configuration files, including network configuration files and end system configuration files, physical and logical topology diagram, a baseline performance level. Network topology diagrams. So we have two types of diagrams that we can use. We can have a physical topology diagram and logical topology diagram. Now, in many places that I worked, I really did, we did see physical topology diagrams but hardly so any uh, logical topology diagrams. Anyway, now, now there's devices who actually can create these diagrams for you automatically. But in physical topology diagram, we should have device type, with including model and manufacturers, operating system version, for like for example, what the operating system you're running, cable type and identifiers, cable specification, connector types, cable endpoints. And then we have a logical topology. This should be a bit more involved, like, for example, device identifiers, IP addresses, prefix length, including subnet mask for IPv4, interface identifiers, gigabit ethernet, fast ethernet, and so on, connection type, DELCs for virtual circuits, like, for example, if you're using frame relay, site-to-site -site VPNs, routing protocols, any static routines that you have, data link protocol, why the area network technology is used. So we have a physical topology. It's actually how the cables are laid down in your network, all PCs and every, every path the cable takes to reach every end device or every node on your network. And logical topologies, for example, is like, okay, um, how the data flows around the network. For example, say that you have all the servers in one section one VLAN. You don't have to write now every server that you have, just what, okay, there's a DHCP server, DNS server, including the IP address on that VLAN. So you don't, the logical topology is actually how data flows rather than physical topology is how physically the cables are laid around the network and devices. So when you establish a network baseline, the network baseline determines the personality of a network under normal conditions. For example, you got to ask, ask a few questions. Can the network meet the identified policies? For example, you need to identify policies and then is the network able to meet this? There's no point of saying to put in the policies out there where n nobody can follow. Some policies, for example, would be like, okay, um, some so, device, so and so device uh, cannot come to our network if they don't meet the health requirement of our uh, network. Uh, for example, if they if they don't have antivirus, they're not allowed to go to the network and so on. What part of the network is mostly used, heavily used, for so we can see which part of the network we need to maybe do some upgrades and so on. What part what part of the network is least used? So maybe we have some switches there that we can like replace them with a bit less powerful switches, and we take these powerful switches if we have them there and put them on more heavily used. How does the network perform during the normal or average day? So we have to uh, take a benchmark or baseline at that time. Where where are the most errors occurring? So you need to find out, okay, well, what area are the most errors occurring? For example, say in, in the normal networking, you have a bottleneck, some areas and so on. What alerts threshold should be set for the device that need to be monitored? For example, you need to set the threshold to saying, okay, well, um, I need the syslog message if this problem starts happening. So establishing the network baseline, first step is to determine what type of data you want to collect because collecting too much data is not good enough either. So there's no point to just collect all the data. You just need to identify the important data that you need to collect. Identify devices 
and ports of interest that's step two and in the step three determine the baseline duration there's no point to take it during the night when nobody's working and like find out the network baseline it's you really want to take the baseline or the, find out how network is performing during the peak hours so commands are useful to network documentation uh, they have for example when we we can use ping like uh, uh, say send echo messages and see re reply messages send so the ping what it does is sends the echo request packets to an address and then wait for a reply the host variable is the ip alias or ip address of the target system so we can ping ping and then an ip address or we can give the name of the host trace route identifies the path packets take through the network the destination variable is the host name or ip address of the target system we can use telnet so it connects to an IP address using the Telnet application. We can run show IP interface brief or show IPv6 interface brief to display the summary of the status of all the interfaces on the device. Uh, show IP root and show IPv6 root that will display what's what's in your routing table. Show running config displays a list of options for enabling or disabling. Uh, so sh uh, displays the contents of currently running configuration file. No debug or debug displays a list of options for enabling and disabling debug events on a device. Show protocol will display the configured protocols and shows the goal and interface specific status of any configuration, configured layer 3 protocol. General troubleshooting procedures. First stage is to gather the symptoms. What's the problem? So, and then isolate the problems. For example, if if the problem if the symptom is uh, the PC cannot access some certain website, that that kind of like okay, well the PC is on and the PC is working and they access in other websites and so on. So you kind of isolating the problem. Okay, well it's not nothing to do with the physical or layer two or layer three because it's got an IP address and it's accessing other website and it's going to maybe is not accessing some website so you kind of like while you gather you gather the symptoms you start isolating the problems okay well this 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 and then it's not a problem so i can try and implement a corrective action well for example maybe that website has has been uh, denied an access list for example in firewall or something and then you see whether, whether the problem has been fixed if the problem has been fixed then you should document that solution and save the changes. So documenting is because it was going to help in case in the future we have similar problem. Then then we can look at documentation and then find an answer right away there. If the problem has not been fixed, you need to undo what you did. That's that's a that's a major thing here. So when you when you actually think, okay, this is the problem and I'm going to fix it. When you do something and it doesn't work, you need to undo what you just did because you can you could be potentially creating some other problems while you're trying to fix the problem uh, one more thing that I need to tell you from the experience uh, when you do fix the problems when you do trying to troubleshoot something do one fix at a time right so don't try something and see if it worked then if it doesn't work undo what you just did try something else see if it works if it doesn't undo what you did do not do two or three things at the same time because even if it fixes one of them is fixed maybe you just did three uh, solutions there you put there and one of them did fix it but the other two they didn't the other two maybe have co caused another problem so you don't know which one to undo and which one fixed so from the experience always when you're troubleshooting troubleshoot uh, like implement one solution that you think that's the correct action and then see if it fixes the problem I know it's a long way like you just want to fix the problem and you want to try everything no take the long route it's better questioning end users this is important you need to ask questions that are pertinent to the problem so for example what does not work you know um well usually gonna get a, you're gonna get an answer from user ah everything nothing works hey you have to you have to remain calm and you have to be professional they have a job to do and things are not working so they are in stress so you have to uh, be polite to them even though if they are being aggressive towards you is they you can see they they point of view that they things are not working and they just want to do the job use each question as a means to either eliminate or discover possible problems are the things that do work and the things that do not work related speak at a technical level the user can understand 
how how has a thing does and has a thing that does not work ever worked like for example there's no point of view saying oh um can you uh, have you looked at the arp table have you looked at the ip config or um have you done the trace route regular users they don't know what you're talking about so they never heard about the trace route what is that so you have to, to speak to them in in technical level so they can understand and this is the big question has a, has a thing that does not work ever worked it will save you for example because you you know you want to check when it worked and when was the problem actually occurred ask the user when the problem was first noticed when the problem was first not was when was the problem first noticed that's a question then did anything unusual happen since the last time it worked what has changed since the last time it did work so for example maybe they changed upgraded something or they installed a new uh, software or new operating system and you need to know that and ask the user to recreate the problem if possible can you reproduce the problem now this is the big thing yeah the users usually they won't be able to reproduce the problem you know just when you go there and they say oh it works now but when you were not here it didn't work and you have to believe that uh, if the user can reproduce the problem it's easy for us because we will find out okay well this is you know this is what's what could be done or uh, what could we do to fix the problem then um, determine the sequence of events that took place before the problem happened and you need to know what exactly does the problem when exactly does the problem occur so when you troubleshooting you can use a layered model for troubleshooting so you can either start at the physical layer so at the bottom or you can start at the top the application layer now depending on the on the problem you can either start at the application top down or bottom up so for example if the if the pc is not booting or there's no power or anything there's no point to start in the application layer you have to start at the physical layer see if it's plugged in switched on and so on so using the layered model, there are three primary methods for troubleshooting networks. So that we have a bottom-up approach. So here, for example, let me just mark it. The, these are the three primary bottom-up, top-down, and divide and conquer. Now bottom-up, you start with the bottom layer, so physical layer. So you start in going, okay, well, is it plugged in? Is this is the plug switched on? Do you have a light on the screen? Do you, you know you see you check in layer one and then you're moving up the layers the layer two is the incorrect vlan maybe there's a poor security problem or something like that and you're moving up the layers top down approach would be like you started the application layer and you're moving down downwards so for example you started with uh, um, application layer scene is maybe a telnet you can't tell it somewhere is maybe the telnet is not allowed on your network and so on Divide and conquer, you kind of divide in the OSI layers. So you start in from uh, layer three, for example, when you're doing ping. So you're starting from layer three. If your pings are working, you get a reply, then you can move up the layers. If the pings are not working, then you can move down the layers. So from layer three and downwards. The next three types of me uh, troubleshooting methods is shoot from the hip. Shoot from the hip is, is when, you have some, when you have some experience, you've done this before, and you kind of like seen it oh, okay well i've seen this before so this is the problem you know you've seen that problem before and you can just troubleshoot right away um that's straight from the hip that's a kind of like cowboy kind of thing cow <laughs> troubleshooting um most of us most of us they go for this anyway they just think oh yeah i know this i know how to fix it spot the difference is a good method because you have a working one and an un non-working one so for example say running configuration for good working running configuration with non-working running configuration and then you can check okay what's the difference and substitution substitution is uh for example when you have a non-working device and you to see that it's not working like for example okay um say you got you got a switch it can't power on right uh first thing you can do is like okay well let me check and change the power cable maybe the power cable is broken so let me substitute that and see if that's the problem so that's that's a good method as well so in addition to the systematic layered approach to troubleshooting there are also less structured troubleshooting approaches so one troubleshooting approach is based on the educated guess by the network administrator based on the system of the problem another approach involves comparing a working and non-working situation and spotting significant difference so the first one was shoot from the hip the other one spot the difference 
And then the last one, swapping the problematic device with a known working one is a quick way to uh, troubleshoot that substitution. So guidelines for selecting a troubleshooting method. So determine the scope of the problem. If the scope of the problem is limited, then uh, now it's a very small problem. Like for example, you can't access the website or you can't access the email, then you use a top-down model. If the problem is complex, then you should go for a bottom-up method. Then analyze the symptoms. Any previous experience, if you don't have any problem, if it's any experience, so you have, it's a brand new problem, then you would go for the bottom-up approach. If you have experience before, then you can use device and conquer method. It's like start from layer three and then move up or down the layers. Thank you very much for watching this section 9.1 troubleshooting with a systematic approach. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnici and I'll see you in the next video 9.2 network troubleshooting. Bye bye.